At the close of World War II, the new Italian Republic emerged, and there was now no official national anthem. The song, Inno di Mamelli, was then used first unofficially and later officially. It was named for its author, the great poet and patriot, Giafrido Mamelli. Mamelli wrote the text for his battle hymn in 1847, while serving as a volunteer under Garibaldi. He called it the Fratella d'Italia. It was set to music soon after it was written by Michel Navarro. The song helped to awaken interest in the growing revolutionary movement throughout Italy. Like many another national anthem, Mexico's was written for a contest. The words for the anthem, Mexican Brethren, was written by Francisco Bocanegra. Unfortunately, the first melody set to Bocanegra's words left the Mexican public indifferent, and thus the government offered another prize for a melody to be set to the poem. This prize was won by a Spaniard, Jaime Nuno. The Mexican anthem had its premiere on September 16, 1854, in the National Theater in Mexico City.
In the spring of 1792, France was at war with Austria, and the French were suffering defeat after defeat. Many Frenchmen were alarmed for their country. One such was the mayor of the city of Strasbourg. He felt that a stirring national song was needed to rally the French forces, so he asked a Captain Joseph Rouget de Lisle, who had written many fine songs, to compose an anthem for France. De Lisle worked all one night, and by morning he had written a poem full of fire and patriotism. He put the words to a melody, which had been written in 1726 by a German named Holzmann, and called the song War Song of the Rhine. The song was an immediate success, becoming what someone has described the fire water of the French Revolution. It was first sung in Paris on July 30th, 1792, by a band of ruffians from Marseille, and the partisans immediately called it the Song of the Marseillaise, which it still is called today. the birthplace of democracy, has a distinction of having the longest national anthem in the world. It has no less than 158 stanzas. The poet of the Greek anthem was Dionysius Solomos, who wrote the words in 1825. The composer was Nicolaus Monzaros, who studied in Italy and had his first success there. The melody for Hymn to Freedom has definite Italian characteristics. Wilhelmus van Nassuen is an old anonymous ballad and must have been written in the year 1568. The song is an expression from William the Silent during one of the most crucial moments of his life. The prince's campaign to free his oppressed people from the Spanish forces had ended in dire disaster and his cause seemed lost. It is the prince himself who speaks in the song. I, William of Nassau, am a free prince of Orange and have always been a loyal subject to the king of Spain. It is not a song of victory, but rather one of resignation. 
In it, the prince bids farewell to his Dutch subjects and addresses words of comfort to them in their distress. The melody which was current among the Huguenots of France in the 16th century has the stately dignity of a church hymn. The song has 15 stanzas in all, the initial letters of which spell the name of its hero. Wherever it is sung in the Netherlands, the Dutch rise to their feet with bared heads. The National Anthem of Australia was written during the early 1900s by Peter D. McCormick. In a letter he wrote in 1913, Mr. McCormick told how he came to write Advance Australia Fair. He says, one night I attended a great concert in the exhibition building in Sydney where all the national anthems of the world were to be sung by a large choir with band accompaniment. This was very nicely done, but I felt very aggravated that there was not one for Australia. On the way home in a bus, I concocted the first verse of my song, and when I got home, I set it to music. It seemed to me to be like an inspiration, and I wrote the words and music with the greatest ease. In Australia today, all Australians stand while the orchestra plays Advance Australia Fair right after God Save the Queen.
1943, the Soviet Union decided to try to improve its relations with their allies and to renounce its policy of world revolutions. As one of the steps in this change of policy, she decided to give up her national anthem, the Internationale, a hymn of communist world revolution. The anthem of the Soviet Union was then produced. The music is strong and appeals to the taste of the Russian fighting men. The words speak of a proud fatherland bound in power and freedom to form a bulwark of friendship for both the nation and her people. The words were written by Sergei Mikhalkov and E.L. Gistan, and the music was composed by the noted Soviet composer A.V. Alexandrov. God Save the Queen. Probably the most truly international melody of them all is God Save the Queen. We know it as America or My Country Tis of Thee. In Germany, it is called Heil der im Siegerkranz. The Danish adopted it as an anthem as early as 1790 with the long title Song for the Danish Subject to be Sung on His King's Birthday. In Sweden, it is Bevar Gud var Kung, which means God Save Our King. The melody is still used in Switzerland and was sung in parts of Russia for many years. There is some mystery about the authorship of God Save the King. The great musician Handel was credited with writing it, but his biographers deny this. Most scholars now believe that Henry Carey, who lived from 1685 to 1743, wrote the melody. There is great drama in the first public performance of the anthem. The year was 1745 and George II of the House of Hanover was king. George II was a German, and he knew English rather badly. Though a German, he fought brilliantly at the head of England's armies against the French in the Battle of Dettingen. Nevertheless, many Englishmen who were followers of the pretender to the English throne, Edward Stuart, hated the foreigners from the House of Hanover. The Stuart followers, or Jacobites, swarmed through the streets of London singing, Shall we basely crouch to tyrants? Shall we own a vulgar sway? Shall a royal steward be banished while a stranger rules the day? The party of the kings, the Whigs, were much worried by all this. They began searching for a song, a prayer for the king, which could be sung to the theater crowds in London. And they found what they were looking for in God Save the King. A special arrangement of the song was made by Dr. Thomas Arne, who had composed England's other anthem, Rule Britannia. On the evening of September 28, 1745, at the end of a theater performance at the Drury Lane Theater in London, some carefully rehearsed men began singing softly, God bless our noble king, God save great George, our king. Other voices took up the song until everyone in the theater was singing. And the song spread like wildfire all over England. It was sung again at the Covent Garden Theatre in London the following December. The anthem seemed a calm, popular feeling and encouraged the king and his supporters.
nations of the British Commonwealth all sing God Save the King, but in addition, they also have anthems of their own. Canada has two, The Maple Leaf Forever by Alexander Muir and O Canada by Sir Adolf Rothier, who wrote the French words, and Calixte Lavalli, who wrote the music. English translation of the words was made by Dr. Robert Stanley Weir. Strangely, both Canadian anthems were composed for contests and special societies, the first for the Caledonian Society and the second for the St. Jean Baptiste Society. The United States won its independence from England in the Revolutionary War, but by 1812 we were back at war with England again. English ships had been interfering with American trade, and we had to make it plain that we were a free and independent nation and must be treated as such. The war continued for two years. In September of 1814, the English troops being forced back from Washington captured a well-known doctor, William Barnes. They held him on board an English ship at Fort McHenry in Maryland. The government asked a young lawyer, Francis Scott Key, and a colonel, J.S. Skinner, to negotiate with the British for the release of Dr. Barnes. On September 12, 1814, the two men traveled down Chesapeake Bay and were permitted to see the English Admiral Cockburn on board an English ship. Admiral Cockburn agreed to free Dr. Barnes, but because his ship was preparing a bombardment of Fort McHenry, it was necessary for all three Americans to remain on board all night. Francis Scott Key stayed on the deck of the English ship all night long watching the battle rage. He hoped and prayed that the fort would not be taken. By the dawn's early light, he saw the American flag still flying proudly over the fort. He immediately began to write the words of the Star-Spangled Banner. During the night, he had heard the English officers and men celebrating what they thought was a victory by singing a song called To Anacreon in Heaven. This was a popular English song, the melody of which had been composed by John Stafford Smith. Now, the words Mr. Key wrote fitted this melody. Thus, as is so often the case with national anthems, more than one country contributes to the final song. So, the Star-Spangled Banner, like God Save the King and many others, might be called an international anthem. It was over 100 years later, on March 3rd, 1931, that Congress officially made the Star-Spangled Banner our American national anthem. Mm -hmm. 